So this is in a request for proposal and, and for some of us that do not uh, understand. So I will be mentioning RFP. RFP means a request for proposal. It could also be a, um, a call. Some people call it call for proposals. Um, so in this request for proposal by uh, UNICEF, it, it is clearly stated that this is what, so you can see it's called desired structure. Uh, most times, and you can see they already gave you the number of pages that they want this report to be 80 pages uh, of the evaluation report. Not many evaluation reports is 80 pages, uh, but because of the scope of this uh, evaluation, um, it is that is why I know it is up to 80 pages, uh, but you won't necessarily get um, uh, most evaluation having 80 pages. In fact, most commissioners now tell you to uh, compress your evaluation reports. So this is a WASH evaluation, um, evaluation of a WASH program in Nigeria. And so that is what I'm referring to here and using it as the components of um, an evaluation report. So the first thing, of course, your cover page, um, I just showed us an example of a cover page anyways, that's the cover page of this UNICEF RFP. Um, of course, you need a table of contents, um, always including the list of tables and list of figures, it's very important. Um, I need to tell us this, uh, most times when you want to apply, like for example, responding to this kind of RF uh, request for proposal, most times the requirement is that you submit an eva evaluation report that you have submitted, that you have worked on before. Now, that is a way to know who best fits um, to conduct such evaluation because your evaluation report should speak to your competency. Uh, and what I mean by this competency is how you format your evaluation report is very, very important. And I'm, I'm, so in saying that, it means how you format your Word document, basically. So Word document formatting, putting text, arranging your text, your charts, your graphs, your images um, in a Word document speaks more of your competency um, on delivering an evaluation report. Don't forget, it's a deliverable, a key deliverable. So, and you don't want to mess it up. So you should think about your table of contents very well, the way it's arranged, not leaving out tables. If you have had tables, so it's better you name those tables, table one, table two, table three. Um, if you have images, you can call a list of images or figures. Uh, you need to think, you need to add that to your table of content. I'm going to show us um, um, a, uh, one of our own evaluation reports at Clones House. Uh, I'll just show us the outline, the way it looks like uh, after going through all this. Then you have the executive summary. Of course, this executive summary is the last thing that is being written in an evaluation report. It is the last section of your evaluation report because it's a summary of the background, the methodology, um, the main findings and the recommendations. So it is written last because you would have wanted to complete all these other sections. You then come to the executive summary and just summarize the key points, you know? Um, oh, it was, um, it was, uh, so X, Y, Z was contracted to carry out an evaluation of this program that was conducted or that was carried out between X year to, to Y year. Um, X company 
um, interviewed X number of people, um, administered questionnaire to A, B, C set of stakeholders um, in the findings, uh, in relation to the, um, concerning the findings, uh, or we found out that, oh, X, uh, the extent of the impact was blah, 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 the, you know, the findings, then the conclusion in, in summary, then your recommendations. Um, normally, we say that you bring your recommendations into the executive summary, and there's a reason for that. Um, so it, it's your recommendations should be um, much more pronounced in your executive summary. So not necessarily a summary of your recommendations, uh, if you can. Um, some, some organizations, uh, some commissioners will tell you executive summary must not be more than two pages or at, at most three pages. So you need to be careful of how you're putting out the summary, but what will come out most in your executive summary should be the recommendations. Of course, acknowledgements, if you want, don't forget this is a UNICEF um, request for proposal. So uh, they want you to acknowledge those that are, yeah, collaborate because this is a, uh, so this request for proposal is a country-wide evaluation. So uh, the scope in terms of scale is huge. And, and that's why list of abbreviations, of course, um, introduction, that's where you talk about the evaluation purpose, the scope, the users of the evaluation. So what are the intended users, which means the, the reports of the evaluation, who do you think will use it? Who are the primary users? Who are the secondary users? Um, who is the object of the evaluation? So who are the target, the stakeholders, the evaluation purpose? What is the purpose of the evaluation? Is it for legitimacy? Is it for control? Is it for um, knowledge? Is it for learning? Uh, what are the objectives? What's the scope? Um, then the context, where is it? Where, where are you carrying out the evaluation? Uh, and based on what program or what projects? So, um, could be that your evaluation is limiting, is limited to a part of uh, the old program that was carried out. So you need to uh, specify that. Uh, most times your introduction even carries the context in it. So it's embedded in, in the context. Then you talk about the methodology. Of course, what method are you using? Um, mixed method, um, method, so method for data collection, methods for data analysis. Um, so quantitative, qualitative, what kind of quantitative, what kind of qualitative, um, is, it, um, is it survey you are deploying? Are you going to be conducting interviews, individual interviews, focus group discussions, will there be observations? Um, then the instruments that you develop based on the method, um, then you talk about data analysis. Okay, if it's mixed method, are you going to analyze the quantitative uh, methodology? So, like your survey. Okay, uh, is it is is the survey going? Is was it deployed on an ODK? And how would you do the analysis? Would you download, put it in an SPSS, put it in Stata? Um, are you going to use some R analysis? Would you use only descriptive analysis, what do you use in French? You need to state all this. Then you talk about your qualitative. What tool are you going to use? Delve, in vivo, um, or your normal Excel sheets with notes. You need to describe all, all that that you have used. Okay, that you have used, not so the ones that you used, uh, because now I'm fast forwarding you to the end of the evaluation. That is when you are putting this together. So, um, so what methodology did you use? Uh, what were the key findings? Uh, very important. 
most times your key findings you your key findings is is always by the evaluation question so each evaluation question are sub headings of your key findings so you need to tell in that section you need to tell what you, what what, are, what were the findings per each of the evaluation questions um, then you have the conclusions which focuses on yes uh, what are the, your conclusions based on the evaluation questions um, like is like a summary so what 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 are you deducing from all your findings so that leads to your conclusion um, lessons learned yes in some some will say oh, leave out the lessons learned maybe put it in annex uh, but lessons learned focuses on what works and what didn't work when we talk about lessons learned we 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 we, you're, you're looking at, yes, for example, strategies that worked um, in implementing maybe watch services, the wash comes, um, what made the watch, wash comes to work better in the communities where you have wash facilities, for example, what strategy uh, worked best for routine immunization, for getting to under five children. Um, so it's majorly about what made so processes what what are the key processes uh, that led us from activity to the outcomes uh, for the project and what didn't work uh, is it the target audience is it that oh the target audience at first um, had to change because of xyz you know those things that one needs to highlight which the program will use um, in the next phase of the project. Uh, then recommendations. Uh, they broke this down to things like strategy, operations, and, 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 and strategy operations, right? Um, so when you're putting together your recommendations, one thing to think about is who are the users of the evaluation? So you write your recommendations based on the users. So not just one specific organization. So there are project implementers. Who are those project implementers? What are you recommending for them? There is maybe those that are into service delivery. What are you recommending to them? There could be, okay, the donors themselves. What are you recommending to them? If government agencies are separate from the implementers, what agency of the government are you talking about and what are you recommending for them? So you need to think about that as part of your recommendations. Of course, annexes, the usual suspects um, are all in your annex. So um, this in brief is actually what you, in, in a typical, uh, evaluation reports. These are the components that you have in there. I'm just quickly going to. I'm going to show us a one of our. So this is one. This is one of our past um, evaluation reports that we did. This is a multi-country um, evaluation. So this this was the report. So you can see. Um, evaluation summary, the background of the projects. This was actually a youth empowerment project that we evaluated in, in, um, in Mali, Somalia, and in Nigeria. So you have the uh, evaluation approach and methodology. Um, so you can, this background is almost like the introduction, right? So you have the methodology, what are the evaluation questions, the approach, and tools, the data collection and analysis. Good, so the limitations. For every evaluation, you always have limitations. Uh, limitations might be in form of data you couldn't collect, right, um, from an entity. So um, it could also be maybe insecurity um, in some parts of where you plan to, to have gone earlier. 
uh, but because of recent insecurity, we couldn't uh, reach. So yeah, I mean, you can think about what limits you in research as well. So you have the findings. Um, earlier on, I told you that findings are by the evaluation questions. Um, in this evaluation, Clones House was tasked to also review the theory of change uh, for this program. And that was a separate finding on its own. Like, what did we find out in reviewing the theory of change? Then we went into the main, so each of the evaluation question, like what, what were the finding? This evaluation report. One thing that is important is that you could see, you can see a flow from findings to conclusions to recommendations. You recommend back to you and say, okay, where did you where did you get such? Uh, why are you recommending such ones? Was there any findings that is related to that? So th these are some of the things you need to uh, consider or, or take note. So there's always that flow from findings to conclusions and what you're recommending based on what has been found out. So you can see that you are limited to the scope of your evaluation scope to make recommendations. Um, and, and that's one critical thing um, that you need to think about uh, in putting together your evaluation report. I've talked about the use of images, the use of um, how you need to format your document properly. I can quickly, you see, you, you can see, okay, I mentioned list of figures. You see list of figures here. You see list of tables here. So these are proper ways in which you format. Uh, and I mentioned, you can see acronyms. I, I, I mentioned Word document because most of these, uh, our documents, they are always from uh, Word documents. We generate them from Word documents. So you need to be mindful of how you're using images, how you're formatting your text. Must be the same fonts. Your titles, your headers must be properly formatted. And I think, uh, that shows you can see the way tables are aligned and you have headers for each of the table. Very, very important. This to take note of or, or look at in putting together your uh, evaluation reports. Um, I think on that note, um, I would uh, need to stop and see if we have um, questions, comments, suggestions before we round up uh, this session of uh, putting together uh, components of an evaluation report. Um, if you, um, so if you, want to know more about putting together evaluation I, I, I already recommended one of our videos uh, and it's been put in the chat box you can refer to uh, to that uh, to get more insights into putting together uh, i think also one one key thing is that uh, which we are always uh, so we 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 always uh, come short of this Start your evaluation. So, so this is a this. I, I think this is the um, is a key point. Start your evaluation report immediately. You have been contracted. This is very key. Um, you see all these introduction parts. They are things you can, in fact, abbreviations and acronyms. Um, of course, table of contents, first thing, list of abbreviations and acronyms. 
introduction, methodology. All these parts are things you would know or you would have known when you were starting out. So I suggest, and it's, been, it's something that works actually, so that when you get to the part of writing reports, because that is the part that most, some of us find, uh, I mean, you, you take time to complete. So, but it's important once you have the outline, you put together the abbreviations, the introductory parts, the context, the methodology, you will know, put them together. So you know you have a chunk already of your evaluation report. You see the other ones, the key find, of course, when data comes in, that's when you know all those ones. Um, so it, it becomes easier by the time you're done or by the time you want to write the evaluation report.